Hi everyone, this is our channel Around My Story. Please like, share and subscribe. Before this summer, I had zero experience with dating apps. Tinder wasn't even released until two years after my long-term relationship ended. During seven years of my relationship, I had played around with my friend's apps, but never swiped left or right. Finding myself suddenly single at the beginning of the summer, and in desperate need of distraction, I dove headfirst into the pool of online dating. I started with Tinder, because my town is too small for anything else, and my cold dead heart wanted casual dates and nothing serious. And that's the whole purpose of Tinder. Tinder met most of my expectations. I went on a handful of dates, met some cool guys, and some not so cool guys. I even hung out with a few truly interesting people, like a radio DJ who runs a wedding business on the side. What I did not expect from Tinder, however, was how most of these interactions started to make me feel good about myself. I mean really good about myself. Like every woman in the world, I have never been happy with my body. At a size 10, I am labeled plus size, and I have worn glasses on and off throughout my whole life. When I'm out with my girlfriends, I am never the girl who is hit on, flirted with, or even picked up. Ever since I hit puberty and became aware of attractive versus unattractive, I have thought of myself as filling the role of the fat friend who just sits back and smiles. Obviously, I've had boyfriends, but they've always been my friends first. So when they said you're gorgeous, what I heard was, I found you gorgeous only after getting to know you. I didn't immediately think you were pretty. I know that having someone attracted to your personality is way more important than thinking you're cute. But I wouldn't hate having just one guy who doesn't know me at all tell me that I'm attractive. Friends, family, and boyfriends, I don't believe. But a total stranger? That person I might actually listen to. This brings us back to Tinder. One of my first nights using the app, a friend and I sat on my back deck and decided who to swipe left and right on. With each it's a match, we laughed and looked into the guy's profile a bit more. After the third match, I said, These guys are just judging me on my appearance, right? And my friend nodded. So they're only swiping because they think I'm cute? Or are they just swiping on every girl? We concluded that obviously some of the guys were swiping right on every girl. But the chances of every single guy doing that were slim. We swiped some more. When I started matching with guys who were classically good looking, well, I won't lie, that felt really good. A hot guy actually thinks that I'm attractive? What? No. How could that be? Then the messages started. Some guys went right in with, You're really pretty. Others went in for a conversation first before giving out compliments here and there. I know that this is how people operate on Tinder, but keep in mind that I'm not used to anything. It wasn't until I started meeting with these guys that I wondered, can Tinder actually boost my self-esteem? Two guys asked how someone as pretty as me was still single. I went on a date with one guy who told me in Spanish that I was beautiful. Another guy who I'd met up with a few times asked me, are you looking for something serious? I laughed like a loon in response. It wasn't the question that surprised me. It was the fact that I was coming for an incredibly attractive, incredibly fit guy. Because yes, I'm being shallow, and only swiping right on guys who I find physically attractive. When I was done laughing, I said something awkward like, Oh, maybe? I mean, I'm not against it. My mind, however, was saying, Are you serious? Have you seen yourself? Have you seen me? I was in fact not attractive, but I simply knew how to dress well. I retreated into my unhealthy shell. Soon after that guy, I hung out with a sweet, nerdy medical student who was in town on a vacation. We got along well. The next day as we met up again, he seemed shocked that I was on a second date. He kept repeating, You're just so beautiful. I never get to do things like this. 
I don't know how to respond to compliments. And the medical boy shook his head. He said, don't do that. Don't body shame yourself. You're so attractive. Have you seen yourself? You're gorgeous. Something about that guy made my typical self-hate thoughts start to lose hold. Again, I know that this is the type of stuff people say on Tinder. But let's be honest, why put in the extra effort? Unless it's true. Somewhere between the casual Tinder chats, the handful of dates, my mind circled a new thought. Am I attractive? I stared at myself in my full-length mirror. I tried to see what these guys saw. Guys who did not know me at all. Guys who are not being swayed by my personality. And guys who have no reason to compliment me because I'm not looking for another relationship anytime soon. Suddenly I started to see it. Where I used to see unsightly lumps and a stomach I sucked in before turning off the lights, now I see a healthy, curvy, and dare I say it, slender body. Friends, family, and boyfriends have always told me that I'm attractive, but it wasn't until these strangers started repeating it over and over that I actually started to hear it. So which is boosting my self-esteem? Tinder or just plain dating? Or are they working in with one another because without Tinder, I probably wouldn't be dating at all? Romantically, I tend not to put myself out there. I typically wouldn't approach a guy and try flirting with him, for fear of rejection, of course. With Tinder, however, just matching with someone seems to lessen the fear of rejection. Whether you matched with them because they're genuinely interested, or you matched because they're saying yes to everyone, Seeing that it's a match message eases a tiny bit of the tension that goes into dating. Whether it's thanks to Tinder or not, in the past few months I've discovered newfound confidence. When someone compliments me, I say thank you instead of responding with a self-hatred joke. When I meet a date for the first time, I work at being my usual chatty, sarcastic self rather than being shy and quiet. I have flirted with guys and even gave a random musician my number. For once in my life, I feel like I'm someone worth dating, rather than fearing my significant other might be too good for me. Did Tinder give me this confidence boost, or am I just getting older and wiser? I don't know for sure, but what I do know is that I'm not going to stop online dating anytime soon. Hello. My name is Kate. Now I'm going to say this. I am by no means a saint. And the only reason I brought this up is later in the story. So I dated this guy in high school for two years. He was the love of my life and I planned on marrying him. His dad became super controlling and eventually he forced us to break up. He immediately got into a relationship with another girl and I moved on. Later on, I met this guy who um, we will call Max, and he was a mix between country and scene. He liked artists like Lil Peep and also was in love with horses. He had a girlfriend who lived across the country, but we stayed friends. They eventually broke up and naturally we both grew closer. Dear God, I regret ever saying yes to going out with him. The first two months, they were constant fighting. He wanted us to visit his ex-girlfriend because she was failing college and addicted to coke while we were together. He would sometimes text her while he was at my house or while we were at dinner, but eventually he quit. The next few months were okay at best. He would constantly start fights with my male friends and even assumed I was cheating on him with one friend who at the time did have a crush on me. But I'm a very loyal person who went as far as to put more of my time into hanging out with my boyfriend than my friends. Eventually we went on a cruise and he got high with a group of girls and kissed one of them. I cut it off and went on to date others. So, he texted me three months after breaking up, saying he wants to talk and apologize for what he did. I was still in love with him, so I agreed and we set up a time for when he could come over. I knew instantly, when he pulled into my driveway, that I was going to regret ever responding. There was no hug, no I miss you, none of that. 
Instead, he walks up to me, looks me in the eye and says, I want to get this out of the way. I've dated a lot of people since we broke up. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. I mean, I did the same when we broke up. So, I kind of agreed to being just friends and never go back to talking about getting back together for now. But then comes the bullshit. He calls me one night and says, Hey, I want to get back with you. Because honestly, wandering around is boring and I don't want to jump into things instantly. And I was wondering if dating without labels would be okay with you. When I asked him to elaborate, he replied, as in, I can still go to dinner with other girls, you can go to dinner with other guys, and we'll see what happens. Needless to say, I hung up without saying a word, told him thanks, but no thanks. You are not who you used to be, and I'm not interested anymore. Bonus chapter. He stopped a few weeks, but he would periodically send me pictures of him at parties or on dates with other girls or pictures of his private areas. Anyways, ever since he has been blocked on everything, but I just thought I would share this with you. This is a shout out to every girl out there. Please find someone that's worth your love and affection, not someone who wants to play with it. Hello there, my name is Pearls. The first day of my professional life was the worst professional day ever. During my first year at college, I wanted to spare my parents some of the expenses. So I took a job, and it happened to be the closest thing I could get to my dream job. It was an office that was mainly concerned with planning fashion shows. I know I was only an intern at the moment, but I have never been so excited in my life. I was actually studying fashion designing, so lucky me. But since we all know that life isn't always pink and roses, I had a repulsive boss. Let's call her Jane. I was employee of the month three times in a row. My life couldn't get any better. Well, except for Jane, who always thought I made her the worst coffee ever, yet she still drinks it. The closest colleague I had at work was a guy named Mark. I also had a tiny little crush on him, but that is not our point here. Anyways, I was supposed to organize a huge event. And so Jane sent an extra long office-wide email giving out details about the event and the brand and who was assigned to do what. I was ecstatic. I was running around the office like a busy bee that had to make sure everything was in place. After a long, tiring day, I was at my desk, rereading the email she sent and enjoying a good cup of coffee. And guess what? Jane had about a gazillion typos, and to be honest, I wanted something to cool me off after doing so much. And being the smart employee that I am, I wanted to crack a good joke and maybe, just maybe, get Mark to laugh. I wrote a sarcastic, full of mockery email. And once I hit send, I heard gasps echoing around the office, and I realized that I had clicked reply all. Jane called and wanted to see me at her office. My knees were all spaghetti-like and I wore my heart down my sleeve. And to my greatest surprise, Jane took it too well. She told me, and I'm quoting, I think you have a great sense of humor. She even offered me to become her own personal assistant and the big event hostess. And not after a long time, Jane had ruined my promotion happiness. She showered me with paperwork that I had to stay up until 1 in the morning to get done. And when the big day was finally here and I was getting ready for the event, I got a bit too excited and I went to the office all dressed up. I saw Mark and tried to act as smooth as I could. Well, I tripped over and I ripped off my dress. Jane came out of her office at the same exact moment and again she saved my life. She lent me one of her super expensive dresses that I'm sure it cost her a big fortune. And that, my friends, was one mistake that I have totally nailed.